morning, America. I thought I'd start off with uh, that kind of a intro. I'm, I'm trying to view things out. Good morning, America's already taken, but you stay classy, San Diego. Those are all just excellent ones, too. Gosh darn it. Uh, John, from Team Defiance, I'm going to call you after the show here. Uh, I've been I, I've been catching up today. What is going on, everybody? Can you hear me? Can everyone hear me okay? Da, da, da. Good morning, Vietnam. Yeah, that's that's a good one, too. Can I come in, Mike? <laughs> no, I'm busy. Mike's busy. Showtime. Who is there? Um, 23 people already. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the MFW show. Welcome back. Welcome back, yeah, <laughs> for me and for you. <laughs> oh. I caught something that my son had uh, last week or this weekend, and I've been, I'm slowly coming back. Messed up my finger at a private event. Got sunburned really bad. Uh, I'm a mess, man. <laughs> I am a mess. How is everybody doing today, though? Oh my god, my, Mike's not wearing sunglasses. No, nope, they're no. gone. Yeah. I finally <laughs> had time to go and get my prescription. <laughs> been lagging. So, but, uh... Michael, the fingers, it's doing all right. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I, uh, an Enola Gay smoke grenade went off in my hand, and it was a burst one. And it blew a hole through the side of it and burned my entire finger right here. Like, probably went to the doctor, said I got about, guaranteed, three three layers of skin. Um, if I would have got one more, it would have definitely punctured through and I would have uh, had to get a skin graft. But And he sucked it up, just like when he got sucked. shot in the back. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's going to take a lot to get me down, but yeah, it hurt pretty bad. It's still, I mean, it's getting better. I've been, I had to clean it every day, and yeah, don't be that guy. And I was trying, I was holding it the correct way. I mean, look, it didn't get any other finger. I mean, it, it came out. Did, the, it came out the wrong. It, it came out the wrong grenade. side, so it was a burst, an old gay burst grenade, and I was holding it correctly in the, state, in the middle of it, and what happened was when I pulled it, the only the top started and the bottom didn't start right away so i shook it and then within a couple seconds it went right out the side it burned a hole through the side and it was like basically launching a rocket from my ring finger so i don't know i've never seen that happen before i'm gonna have to email christian over at enola gay and tell them that that happened um so be careful if you have that the burst in you know, gay grenades um so that doesn't happen to you don't hold it in your hand for a long time i it came to my attention i was telling a few people this i think michael you were there too and so is jen um i don't know whoever said to shake it i don't know if that's even necessary uh to do that yeah don't shake weight <laughs> yeah don't shake weight the grenade <laughs> yeah that's a good one tucker um i i don't think that you need to shake it um, so probably for future reference for myself personally, I'm not going to be shaking. I'm going to pull it and throw it. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to be, or I'm going to use gloves. I, I, I think it, it just ended up with a faulty one. Yeah, I think I, it was I, too. I've, I've had one um, where it just kind of blew up front uh, instead of smoked, um, and that was just a regular pull one. So it just made a loud bang. Uh, that was obviously just the uh, igniter going off. Um, so it doesn't surprise me that you have one that just burned out the side. It's just a faulty one. Uh, yeah, lucky just... me, right? I mean, that <laughs> doesn't surprise <laughs> me, I, but it surprised the hell out of me. And now I got, you know, basically skin missing off of my, my ring finger. Um, now, now, funny thing about the pink grenade, you're talking about, uh, it doesn't spread well. You're right. It doesn't. We, we launched about a good 30, 40 of them at this private event and, Nice bang. Uh, it had a really good echo because we were in a valley. But the funniest thing is we're cleaning up, and I light one, and I oh, threw yeah. it right at, his, at Jonathan's feet. And I kid you not, that thing, I mean, it shot paint all over him, all over the canopy, all over my car. I mean, that that was out of 40 of them, one. I mean, it sprayed a good 10, 10 feet 
radius around us. I mean, just paint everywhere, unexpected. But I that's think, what I expect out of all of them. Yeah. And, and that's the only one we saw that happen to. So I, I honestly feel like because this is their first production, and KT is, has said that they've had this idea for a while now. It's just a matter of you know putting it into production. But I really think that the bag of the first of all the material that they use that's called paint is not paint at all. I think it is too heavy for that that launch. I think if they actually put a bag of paint of liquid in there, the the uh, the uh, what do you call it? Well, I think they. I wouldn't be surprised if they tried that, but you end up getting just a mist shower and not globs of paint. They get all. Well, I mean, and I think that's then, what they're going for. Even then, um, you know, it's a lot better. Um, we got. A pretty awesome show for you guys today. We got a bunch of products in that we've been waiting a long time for, uh, that you guys have been waiting a long time for. Um, KT did a video last week on the lock bolt, which is finally in. Um, I missed last week's show. I had my son not oh, it was doing like well. Five-minute show. Yeah, <laughs> I was in the middle of packing, trying to get everything out to zero hour, and I'm still packing. I I I, I get all these requests at the last minute, so. There goes my luggage, and now I just got to check in two bags of product. So. Right. <laughs> so this week's gonna be a big one. We're gonna talk about. We're gonna be talking about zero hour. Uh, Mike and KT are headed out tomorrow, uh, so I'm gonna be alone here at the office, oh, crying, man. crying myself to sleep every night. Uh, <laughs> um, no, but they're you know this. They've been getting ready. Our Mike's been getting ready for this event for the past like three weeks, um, which. Thank goodness all these products came in because we would have been, it would have been a pretty, uh, pretty uh, bad event if we didn't have some of this stuff um, that a lot of you guys are requesting. Um, we're gonna be talking about some new products. Uh, we're just gonna be talking about a couple of things that are coming in this month uh, in the next month or two uh, that are gonna be big for us. Mike has uh, a pretty lengthy time on the road the next two what two, two three, weekends yeah, two I, I go weekends. I go to zero hour I fly back Monday um, I'll be here Tuesday Wednesday loading up to get on the road and drive up to uh, super game so and then I'll be there all the way through so I, I got like two weeks of just off and on right so we're gonna have uh, for a lot of you guys that are watching that are in these areas of these events or you're visiting those areas um, contact us immediately zero hours too late sorry if you um if you wanted something it's it's it, too late no cause what you'd have to <laughs> expedite shipping what are you gonna take it with no, you no well, that's what i'm saying i i i've I, my my two checked in luggages have turned into uh 50 pound <laughs> uh 50 pounds each of product so i'm bringing basically mike's wearing one pair of underwear yeah, all, all week. weekend take out socks everything you bought one outfit so you guys you guys win definitely <laughs> Um, well, if you can, Mike said it. I'm not. I wasn't gonna volunteer him, but he said it. Yeah, hit uh, me up pri uh, on on my Facebook. Just send me a message if there's something. If it's small enough and I have room, I'll squeeze it in. Otherwise, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, for the other events, uh, Super Game, um, Oklahoma D Day, uh, we're we're probably gonna we're gonna be getting a, a bigger shipment of stuff for D Day, aren't we? Oh, D Day is usually about three pallets of stuff. Cause yeah, D Day's all week long so you got from uh i think everybody starts showing up monday and it pretty much lasts the entire week until closing up shop sunday morning so <laughs> turn the underwear in, inside out it's still the same <laughs> except the shame is showing now on the outside uh no i'm just kidding um so yeah oklahoma d-day i know I, I know a lot of you guys are going to be there a lot of our ambassadors are going to be there um, it's going to be a, a big, big game um, for everyone. not just you guys, but for everyone. Um, we're definitely going to have to make sure that we have all of our uh, main stuff. We're going to have a lot, all of our new new stuff out there, the UMP, uh, the lock bolt. We'll have plenty of that okay. stuff. Um, I don't know if we have Bolt and Blizzard lock bolt. i got to check. We're going to take them all here? Is it zero hour? I'm trying to think if I actually pack some. Well... If we don't, uh, <laughs> you, you can definitely still order from us, and we'll, we'll try to get it out there in that shipment when he brings it back. Um, one thing I want to remind you guys, uh, I finally, you know, I'm, I'm still shaving my head. You can still see I even went down because Dusty Hatfield and, 
And Chris Kelly and the other guys that participated in the Brave the Shave thing uh, said to go down. So I, I've buzzed it. I'm going to continue to do it. Um, I have a sponsor now. Uh, his name is Daniel, and I'm going to be posting that information on um, my page and then also on the MCS page to I'm going to be moving forward with my event. It'll probably be in June here in the Gilroy area. Um, so for my ambassadors in this area that are willing to come down and you know have some, some free food and shave their head or donate um, to a cause, uh, it's gonna be a good, a good, good thing. And like I said, the, it's uh, for an organization or foundation uh, called St. Baldrick's. I've been participating with them since I was in high school. Uh, we used to do it every year for base, the beginning of baseball season. We used to shave our heads uh, for children's cancer. So what it is, what they do is they provide uh, money. They provide uh, pretty much anything in correlation with uh, the families with children that have cancer or the children themselves. So Daniel, uh, and I'll disclose his information and his profile uh, once I get it sent over to me, but Daniel has a very rare form of leukemia um, and he is 13 years old and um, I've been shaving my head. I made a couple donations and I'm gonna be making more uh, with my time and, and as much as I can uh, as far as financial and then ultimately with bringing in as many people as possible uh, for him personally. So it would be really cool if you guys, uh, I'll post the link again. Uh, it is on my page still, and I will um, put that link up for you guys to understand, you know, what it's for, where it's going. You can make a donation directly to it, even if it's a dollar. You know, if I can get a hundred of you guys to do it, that's a hundred bucks. And that helps him, uh, it benefits him in a, in a very huge way, uh, allows him to get things and toys that he may not you know have with his family with all the medical bills etc so um it's a great cause uh so i'm asking you guys you know if you even if you can't donate but you you brave the shave and you shave your head that's really awesome if you can send me photos or a video of it that'd be really cool if you want to challenge your friends your family um that's really awesome as well so i just wanted to remind you guys i'm still doing that we got the uh, Black Rifle Coffee Company, Jeremy got his box uh, or his raffle basket, which is pretty cool. It's like a bunch of coffee, t-shirts, stickers, um, beer koozie, I think, or a mug or something like that. Um, we're going to be sending them some markers, uh, some of our, two of our flagships, to have them mess around with them in their videos. So that is going to be a really cool thing that they're going to have from us. Um, we'll, we'll probably get those out to them next week when things settle down a little bit from this week being at the event. Oh, nice. There it goes. This is what, the 13th episode, they forget that it's Wednesday? Ridiculous. <laughs> totally kidding. What's going on, Callista? Callista's at zero hour. Her flight got delayed. That no, sucks. she's in Boston, I believe, right? She's in Boston? It's still yeah. delayed? No, 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 no. She's going to hang out there until Thursday. Oh, Friday. oh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, Jeremy... Um, share your experience with the Black Rifle Coffee Company. They're going to send us some more cool stuff. Um, we're going to have some other things to give out from them uh, once they get their order in. Uh, if you guys don't drink coffee, they have other cool stuff there. And their videos are really sick. So just go ahead and take a look at their stuff. It's uh, Black Rifle Coffee Company uh, as their Facebook page. Um, Jurassic Jerky LLC, the coupon code at the top of the page is still available. It's still going. Um, people, you guys are buying for them, which is really cool. Um, so continue doing that. Uh, we still haven't received their samples yet, so I'm hoping to get that here shortly. He said he sent it like last what? week. Jurassic Jerky LLC. Oh, okay. So um, once we get some flavors in here, we'll probably give some away, whatever we don't eat. Um, <laughs> uh, and other than that, I'm still working on some new sponsors. Been really busy. Haven't had any of uh, MCS Reds Red Hot deals yet either. Um, I have to get back on that. We've been, I've been doing some other projects and I've been out. So, uh, once this, this next week should be calm, should calm down a little bit more for me. So you'll see me more active, active on the Snapchat and on the Facebook pages, um, giving you guys some more promo stuff. I got a bunch of soft goods stuff that's staring me in the face right now that we need to get rid of. Uh, Mike's going to have a lot of it at Super Game. I uh, have some more vests for you guys. We have some more clearance vests for you guys. A lot of people have been asking me about the, the vests that I made that were 85 bucks that had the pouches, miscellaneous pouches. Basically, it was a dump pouch, 
three mag pouches uh, for your Helix or DMAG or IDAM mag or Tiberius mag or T15 mag, Milsig mag, whatever. And then I also had an admin pouch and two pistol pouches uh, that fit a Tipex magazine. Um, I have more of those. So if you are interested, uh, I make five at a time. And then what I do is I, I wait till I sell them all. So right now I have one left of the five that I've made. Uh, it's $85. It's OD green and eight color desert, uh, quote unquote, multicam color. Um, and I will have those available. You can message me directly or you can uh, message Val or come in the chat. They'll know what we're talking about. Um, it's 85 bucks. Stan, if you need to message me, I'll, I'll get you squared away. You'll take my last one and uh, we'll be good there. Um, let's see here. We have, I have some samples of some new soft goods coming in. Um, we're going to be getting ready to bring back some of the app pass stuff here in the next couple months, which is good. Uh, James Davis, da, 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 get my D Magwell for my M17. Are you bringing James Davis a Magwell huh? M17? M17? James, you know that that that, uh, that requires modification, right? Can't wait to move my thing to our, and get my D Magwell for my M17. I believe, James, send me a message because I'm not sure what you're talking about. The M17 is not ours. So I don't have a D Magwell for that. Someone said that they could put it on there, but it required modification. What Magwell? The D Mag Magwell? The D Mag Magwell. No, who said that? I don't know. Some there's been quite a bit of people coming in the chat asking about it. No, because it doesn't have. I mean, it has the screw points, but it has nowhere for the trap trap to uh, connect. No, yeah, I don't know. I I don't know where somebody. I mean, there there's there's uh, Nova Games uh, makes a mod that you insert into your your Magwell, I believe, or they 3D print you a whole other Magwell that accepts the D Mags, but nothing that we have. I'm not sure, James. Message him. Um, I've I've heard that though. Actually, recently this past weekend, uh, a 3D printed Magwell. It could be. Um, we don't have that. We don't have really anything for the middle sig uh, or T15 stuff. Uh, but I met someone. Uh, some other guys. My bad. Oh, okay, James. Um, one thing I wanted to touch on real quick. Uh, I wanted to say thank you for all of you guys that have our back in the groups recently. Um, we've had. I've saw I've seen some kind of uh, some slander stuff and some guys popping off on some matters that are exaggerated uh, and are not necessarily uh, true. And you guys have came in there. People were having issues with markers uh, in the especially in the MagFed BST group. Have you guys have been in there and tagged me? You tagged Mike. You tagged Jamie. Um, that's really cool. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, I, I I really don't know where the common sense goes when you have a problem with something and you don't contact the manufacturer, but you're going to ask a bunch of people not to say that you guys don't have the answers or haven't had relatively the same problems. But, you know, first thing that comes to mind for me uh, is if I have a problem with something that I buy, I contact the manufacturer. Um, so I really appreciate that. I've noticed a lot of you guys are, are, are really going in there. Tucker, uh, Stan, um, you know, Chris Kelly, Dusty Hatfield, all you guys, there's, there's too many to name. Uh, Javier Gonzalez, but you know, there's there's a lot of stuff um, that we can help you with. There's there's really no excuse that we can't help you um, with a lot of things. Where, where we got you know the chat now, me, uh, Mike. I mean, you guys you guys are always contacting us via Facebook or you know uh, in the chat. There's no reason. So if people if you do see do see people having problems with certain things and they're posting videos and they're saying how they can't get a hold of anybody. Uh, I'm gonna go out and call bullshit right away <laughs> because that there's just no way. I mean, I I haven't not responded to anyone. Um, Val goes through the emails every single morning during business hours. Um, you know, I'm on the chat on the weekends. If you we miss your chat, you know, you can always leave your voice, uh, your email, and we'll always get back to you because uh, I go through those on Monday. We always have a lot um, for ones that slip through the cracks because uh, I can't be on all the time. So you know. If you see people like that, shoot them my email. Most of you guys have it or have them chop, uh, hop on the chat and we'll take care of them. So thank you guys for that. Um, let's see. 
Uh, 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 I don't know where KT's at. You want to text him? I keep seeing him walk by. I think he's he's getting some stuff ready. Um, so a lot of you guys have seen the auction portion of the website, um, which I want to show you here what we got going on. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. So I'm gonna go to. So you guys can see here on the website now a lot of things have changed. Uh, under the resources tab, we have uh, tech videos. So a lot of you guys are having questions with installation of Flexi Air or the remote, or I'm sorry, the mil spec barrel nut adapters for your handguard and how to install handguards and the differences, blah, 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 are all right here in this first video. Uh, Jamie's 468 Speed Tech video. All the videos that we have for our markers are up on this site. Keep in mind, we do not have paper manuals we don't have parts schematics or anything for these newer markers because of their internal base system is based off of Tipman or bt4 valken sw1s so internally if you have questions on installation of things you can find that there i'm going to take you to the auction tab now show you some of the really awesome markers that jamie's been building um Let me run some of this yeah go find them real quick mike's gonna have an auction marker for this episode that we'll do so what you see here is the, uh, the, the buy it now price. So right now the bids are underneath that, uh, that amount. So you can actually go here. Um, there's actually no view the details in the marker here. Jamie did a video, you, which you can see there's close up photos of each individual system here. Um, if there is not a bid, oh, there is actually. So here's where you can see everything. Minimum, minimum bidding allow, amount allowed is USD is 276. You can go to bids here and you can actually see the, the people who are bidding on the markers live. So first bid was 150 bucks. It goes up in increments of, I believe 10 or 12 or however many you want actually. And uh, it's at 275. So if you buy it now or you press, if you press add to cart, that means you are buying it now at the $450 price. The marker is yours, okay? Please watch the video if you have any questions regarding the accessories or the functionality or anything of these systems because there are uh, important details regarding this these markers. So there's about eight days left. Each of these will have about, I believe, 10 days on it or 11 days for bidding. Um, and then the guy yeah, with the top, mark, or top bid will obviously win the marker. So that's on the auctions tab. We still got the $5 uh, shipping. So KT's kind of been going through a lot of this stuff, going through a lot of the, um, of the, uh, I guess you could say kind of uh, tidbits of the, of the website, making things a little bit more accessible for you guys. This is one I want to show you guys. It's a pretty good, awesome uh, new feature that we're going to be updating. Okay. Oh. Oh. Okay. Sorry. Oh. Oh. All right. So. All right. Hopefully that was it. Oh, I'm just kidding. All right. I think they're messing with me now. So this is the quick guides portion. You can see internal air and air stock guide. These are pictures of the basically the how to's on certain markers. So blizzard shape projectile and first strike upgrade guide. It actually tells you exactly what you need in order for first strikes to be used on these systems. Keep in mind that all of our complete markers that you buy all come first strike ready. But if you're looking to upgrade a marker that does not have the internals that you need necessary to use first strike, this is how you do it. Um, there is, this is the Bolton Blizzard Marker Internal Air and Air and Stock Guide. This gives you every piece that is necessary for you to have internal air. So quick guides and all of these, these fun informational things that you need uh, to be successful are located here on are under resources. So quick guides is the newest part of this. Um, tech videos is going to be updated um, quite frequently, um, but you're going to have the option to be and see all this stuff 
um, <laughs> to see all of that stuff firsthand. So you guys can, if you have questions or you know someone that has questions on how to install certain things or have these, uh, um, these accessories put on the marker, we have those now available in the quick guides portion. Um, Christopher Enrique, that's a lo really long name, sorry, but um, the lock bolt, we're going to be going through that in this episode. Uh, da, 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 return fire, yeah. Um, do you, any of you guys have any questions um, real quick before I get these guys back here? KT's, KT's wandering around somewhere. So, waiting on the lock bolt, yeah. It will be available. Um, we have them now. We were just waiting on the rod. Uh, portion that goes inside of the unit itself. Um, I can't wait for this to 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 get out there. I mean, this is going to be a really awesome upgrade um, for you guys. This is going to be really solid for you guys that want the E triggers. The E triggers with the lock bolt is going to be your hallelujah. Okay, um, it will be a solid solid upgrade piece for a lot of your full auto upgrades for any of our systems. You know, the Hurricane already has it. It works flawlessly in my opinion. Um, but for those of you using field paint now, uh, have to use crappier field paint than others, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna save you a world of hassle. It's really easy to clean. It's really easy to disassemble. Um, it's not gonna add any complex or complexity to your markers. Um, and it's just, a, it's just a simple device that is going to help you guys stay on the field longer and uh, shoot more paint downrange definitely um for the mil spec buffer tube i had to put a tank o-ring in there so the nipple would point down it looks like the o-ring covers the air hole and the drop down to asa a little bit should i be concerned with air um let's see here tucker so uh tucker danielson what i have noticed okay um i have I have probably installed well over 200. Ay, ay, ay. Hey, cut it out! Cut that out! It's 5 o'clock, time to go home. Who is that shooting stuff? Huh? Where's TT? What the heck are you doing? Sorry, guys, I gotta, I gotta text KT before I continue. Yeah, I want this episode, just me talking to you. So. Anyway, when, um, I, like I said, I've installed probably well over 200 of the remote line, mil-spec remote line adapters, and I have only one that has completely lined up perfectly, bottomed out, and had the fill nipple, the 45 degree fill nipple, line up perfectly in the bottom. One out of all those. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, KT. <laughs> Hello, how you guys doing? So... Um, there are many cases, uh, that is one of the most commonly asked tech questions that we get, um, that I get quite often is how do I install it? So just, I don't have one here, um, but we do have a video for it and I'll, and I'll do another one cause that's one of the videos that we, I put on the list today that I'll be doing for you guys and KT will be doing for you guys to, uh, kind of make things a little bit more streamlined as far as, uh, some stuff. So with the remote line adapter um, what you'll do is you'll always screw it in until it bottoms out now that that may make it the you know the 45 degree fill nipple on this side it's completely not lined up at all um, what you'll do is you'll back it out until it lines up and then you'll lock down that ring now if it does not seal and when you in when you hook up your air and it leaks that means it's, it's probably not in there far enough. So what you can do is exactly what you did. You put an, an O-ring, a tank O-ring, just set it in the ASA, screw it down, and then do the same exact thing. And what that does, that O-ring will seal that chamber. I would apply a little bit of Teflon grease just so you don't, you know, you're not just threading, especially if you have a brand new ASA or you have a brand new remote line adapter, you don't need to be, um, those threads are a little bit sharper and you don't want to nick or scratch or even cut that O-ring. Uh, even though it's a little bit harder material, but just for safe safeguards, I would put a little bit of oil in there. Then you do the same thing, and then that should fix your problem. The most common mistake that we see is that that locking over. <laughs> <oil. laughs> He's doing that all. He's doing that all there. He's messing yeah. with me. Um, you know when he when he. 
when you use that locking ring, when you use that locking ring, you want to use a tool to torque it down. So you'll see it, that there's a hole, two holes on it. Put an Allen key in there and torque it down. That will lock it into place. You won't need to worry about it coming loose unless you don't put it down tight enough. But that should that should eliminate that problem and you should be good to go. <laughs> um, the USM, all That's what we do all day long, fellas. So get some uh, shout out there. Richard Reeves, say how you guys doing? Craig, uh, Stan. I know we're going to see most of you guys out there at zero hour next couple of days. So it'll be awesome. So now that KT's here, uh, I've talked to you guys enough. Um, let's go through what we're going to be talking about this episode. Did you get cover anything yet? I did not. I waited for you to get here. I talked about some of the. I t went them, showed them the guide or the uh, quick guide. Okay. Showed them some of right, the new stuff on the website. Okay, okay. Auction gun. Uh, we will have an auction gun for you guys. I went through our sponsors um, and some other stuff. So. All right. KT's going to go through some of the new products. We're going to talk to you about some of the exciting things that we have coming up and then ultimately zero hour what to expect um the uh some of the stuff that they may do out there for you guys so go ahead all right ah uh, boy did, did somebody grab my bolt i think so. no not that bolt <laughs> hey guys i'll be right back oh i didn't see you bring it out here um let's see here it's happening <laughs> drop the hammer <laughs> um Thank you, Christopher. So, uh, a lot of you guys know that the new UMP trigger is in. We also have the Vortex hopper shells. Um, and some of you guys have asked me recently, is the Vortex hopper um, shells compatible with MagFet? No, but for those of you who have a Vortex and that want to have the hopper shell, technically all they have to buy is the right shell, the right hand shell, correct? On the, the vortex, cyclone. that's correct. So, for those of you who want to go in between, have a spare marker, you know, Dusty, Jefferson Kroll, you guys who have loaner fleets, um, those of you who want to have a hopper gun that can be made into a, a tactical looking one, um, all you need to buy is the right hand shell with the cyclone adapter. So, you can definitely switch in and out of uh, MagFed and hopper with that, just that right hand shell. So, for those of you guys who know, of people who are on the fence about getting into MagFed but want to have a hopper fed gun, the Vortex uh, hopper gun is now available and it can put, put a mil spec hand guards on it. You can put rear air. The Titman A5 can't have rear air. Um, and it has tons of upgrades just like the Vortex. So um, that's a new and exciting one that I think uh, we, we need to definitely do some more promo and marketing on because I, don't, I think. I don't think we put the, the gun up yet. Oh, we didn't? No, we have not. We oh. just put up the um, the kit to convert your A5 into internal air, but not the whole entire markers. So we have not caught up with production. Yet. Oh, okay, okay. Well, when we have it, I'll make <laughs> sure uh, I do some videos. I thought we had, I thought we had already released right. it. Um, see, this is what happens when you miss a couple days. Yeah, I missed you, two days. You're in the... bed. I don't, I don't get to go on social media. I don't get to do nothing. Right. So, um, but when we have it, I'll definitely do a video for you guys. I think that's going to mm -hmm. definitely be a product that's going to be able to that you guys, uh, my ambassadors, for you guys uh, promoting the sport, uh, growing MagFed, are going to be able to use to your advantage to get more people into. Uh, it's going to be affordable too. I it mean, is. It's it going to be very affordable. So um, for those of you who who love the A5, here is your MagFed, <laughs> uh, your MagFed version with right. more upgrades right. than an A5. So shout out to Dusty, how you doing? And Callista, I know you guys said hi to me earlier. I ran off before I could say it. Um, so I cannot go over some new product that I've been working on and what's uh, going to hit the, uh, the floor for you. Um, the Javelin Bolt, um, the new version, Gen 2 version is online now. Uh, just came in like about a few hours ago. We just finished it up. Um, my, Mike actually did a final polish on them. And these are about 30 to 4% lighter than the previous version. So you can shoot a lot more rounds um, out of one man, well, out of actual one tank. Um, Mike was able to go down to, I think the last time he was testing, he did um, 10 mags um, out of a 13 CI. So a lot more shot, and you can actually deplete the tanks out to like, below 800 PSI before it gives up. So that's going to be a lot better for you. Um, it's really nice. It's polished. I mean, you can, it's it's beautiful. So you can get a lot more out of your 468. The, the construction of these, oh my gosh. When you guys... <laughs> if, you, if you can come into the shop and feel, I mean, not only does it feel lighter, but it's polished. 
Um, so there's no more sharp edges or, you know, where it feels like it was just machined. Um, it, oh, man. I mean, th this feels like a firearm precision oh, yeah. piece, um, hands down. Um, Peter uh, Prokoff, the 468s weren't out of stock necessarily for this. They were actually out of stock if you didn't have lowers. But, yes, we do have them back in now. Um, I know one question you guys are going to ask is, are all the 468s going to come with this? Yes. Because, uh, well, the 2017 versions of you that buy the complete markers will get this new um, Javelin, and then we'll have them for sale, obviously, by themselves. Um, but, I mean, it, it's... It, it doesn't look very very different. Uh, the, the machine cuts are a little bit different. Uh, there's that tapered edge now, but from what we've tested with um, first strikes and with our red rounds, awesome, yeah, should, should awesome, yeah. Yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome. It's awesome. really make a big difference. Um, able to channel the air fully in the bolt rather than the past where the the plastic version, the polymer version has only one air port, so air gets in and it kind of like stumble in there and gets out here. Air actually cradle around the cent center area and all the air kind of follow through so have a better flow um, the shot is much better I mean we're, we've been shooting single crazy so many um, tests have been done through it so that'll be that'll be available for you guys um, we did change the o-ring sizes on there so it's actually using number eight the original yeah but, but this one's the small one now and these are the same no they all they're all eight number eight. Oh, really yeah change it again eight. No, the, the, for Gen for the Gen 2. Oh, okay, okay. For, for okay, the, the okay. new Javelin bolt, they all use the same um, standard O-ring. Okay, okay. Because we, we, um, we made improvement, um, better seal, better tolerance, so it shoots a lot better. So these are online now. You guys want to pick one up, they're available online. And <laughs> if you're looking for the uh, 468 um, 2017 model, we should have it back in the next day or two. And you guess if you need one or want one, go ahead and order it. I know it's gonna say back order, but it's better to uh, do it than get in the queue as opposed to get it get in the queue later, and we'll, we're just gonna tumble at that point. Um, Douglas Gluff, uh, with first strike rounds, um, with the new 2017 version, and this is this is this is something that needs to be addressed in Mike's video. Um, that I mean, because we're we're constantly getting questions. There's a lot of people out there that still don't know the differences between the 2017 and the 2016 versions um and basically we're, we're at a point now where it really comes down to what your intentions are with a unit whether you're going to be shooting first strikes or you're going to be shooting round ball only um, the 2016 version is going to be primarily for round ball okay due to the multi-piece upper and a, about 10 other variables that are within that system uh, within the multi-piece with the white bolt um, at the feed collar all the different things that we've kind of fi figured out when KT was designing the one piece upper and obviously this new javelin bolt here um, you need to keep that in mind that that's it's more be, focused it's, yeah, it's yeah, more it's focused, more focused on, a, on the first strike ball. as opposed to in the past when the the previous version we kind of focus on both rather than trying to do one or the other this one actually built um, focusing on first strike make sure it fits well Right. And that's uh, the different design, the cuts on the body, cuts on the, the face of the bolt, everything about it. It just focused on that, preparing for the shape round to release, and you know we've got to make preparation for that. Right. So uh, in regards to your question about the O-ring on the front, um, this, to my knowledge, what Mike has done is a uh, kind of a drop-in system. It, it's good to go. Uh, with the one-piece upper, and because this is polished, it doesn't carry much resistance. And these O-rings are not beefier like the old javelin bolt um which we use what were those 14s um actually we use uh number 14 and 14, yeah, 14 13 14 13 yeah. and 14 so these are they work they're pretty flush with the system and they actually seal the chamber superbly i mean it is precise which is going to give you that consistency that we were talking about um, when we were doing our testing here as well so um, as far as I know, with Mike testing it, um, he shot first strikes and the red rounds, and he didn't have any problems. And with you guys that have the 2017 version of the Javelin, um, you haven't had any problems either. I haven't heard of very many problems with the, the new Javelin outside of it does need oil. So marker oil, um, the... Uh, you know, the, there's a couple. There's it will a couple, help. 
um, what we did was we kind of trying to make it without using oil. So earlier, like I said, we tested without oil on this Javelin bolt. We're getting really good results. We actually, um, it would use lighter spring and it would keep up velocity above 300. So um, with additional um, lubrication, it will shoot even better than before. Right. And that's just, keep in mind, guys, that's standard maintenance on the Javelin and the one-piece upper. I mean, you, we're, you need to be a little bit more liberal with the oil on the older ones, but that's every time that you play. That's not, you know, every every game. That's just right before you play. Um, you always want to, you can cycle, you can dry fire the, the 468 to make sure that it's cycling correctly. Um, cost, that's going to be the next question. Oh, the cost is the same as the previous version. Um, doesn't change at all. We made improvement on top of what we've done in the past so the cost is the same um, we don't change that so you guys are getting a better product improve and the cost is um are you taking any to zero hour we are taking some well it just came in we're, we're actually making them right now as you as we uh, as the show's uh going on we are preparing and, and actually uh doing a final touch on them and taking them to the to the event this weekend so um uh douglas you can come and see kt or mike at zero hour and then they'll have one for you okay make sure they save one for you um gog grease yeah rigo there's there's a bunch of types of greases and oils out there uh, more commonly than not something that has a liquid consistency nothing that is thick um, i wouldn't even recommend using silicone oil i would probably recommend our marker oil more than anything um, because once you start dealing with thickness you're going to start dealing with o-ring swelling you're gonna start, depending on its potency uh you know it could be corrosive to certain things don't ever use firearm stuff but um there's there's uh there's a there's one that what was mike was talking about it's called monkey something Beast monkey grease Mon monkey well monkey grease, lube or something monkey, like that. monkey lube or something like that you guys probably know if you got one of you guys know put in the comments um for me uh it, it's one of those and its consistency is very slick um what we do here is we have it in the back and we just dip the javelin bolt in the front and then i'll just take it with my hand and i'll move it in and out of the upper receiver a little bit just to uh, disperse that oil and then you know uh, go ahead and dry fire it a couple times make sure it's cycling correctly um, let's see here let's move on to the next thing did Mike get that gun yet or he's working on it right he's now. working on it yeah he's working okay. on it right now so Mike's still building the um, the auction gun for us for this uh, week show I know the last a couple of days ago I mean I'm sorry last week when uh, um, we didn't have the show I will show you guys the the new do you go over the lock bolt mm -mm. yeah so I went over lock bolt I know that you guys uh, seen the video already but really quick um, kind of go over it uh, one more time to for those who missed that so the lock bolt on the uh, on the blazer and the bolt are out um, uh, last week so simple system you can actually turn the lock bolt on and off that is turning it on um, and then you can turn it off by just move the lever and now you just kind of stop right there so that's been out I know a lot of people been asking us about that that particular uh, well, I mean particular parts um, for about a few months since we did the video beginning of the year so now that's out for you also um, the Griffin and the Cronus kits are also out on the site uh, let me show you guys uh, small 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 cast uh, small caster. Small caster. And so I have, it on the, I have an MCS. Okay, here. So small caster. All right. So uh, it's under here. Conversion kit. And this is the Cronus version. You're getting a little bit more. Um, Cronus version comes with a barrel adapter. Basically, you get a blizzard body that has um, the tip 98 threads. And you get a barrel adapter that allows you to use your standard barrel that you already have because the Cronus used the A5 barrel thread. It comes with one magazine and then your uh, ASA adapter here. So basically just gut it out, take all the parts, um, drop it in, use the additional parts to come in and then you're set. And that's gonna get you the um, the uh, um, the conversion kit for those uh, markers. So simple installation. Um, we're gonna probably have to make a video on how to install that. But on that, the I think the most tricky part about the installation is the air. So basically, you have to take out your air tube with the um, uh, threads. You have to take it out. We will put um, a layer of sealant right here on the threads for you, so that way you don't have to do it yourself. 
but I would recommend also have um, some Teflon, Teflon tape tapes. sitting around just in case that doesn't sealed up because you know how thread goes. So you thread in some material, kind of you know, kind of crunch it up and push past the threads and may not seal. But uh, Teflon tape will definitely do it for you for any type of sealants, um, especially come with threads. Red Loctite is not a sealant. Okay, do not use Loctite for that piece because you will have a very difficult time getting rid of it. Right. If you need to do maintenance. Um, common leaks come from that area just because that goes directly into the valve so which you, all you have to do is unscrew that from the pistol grip from the bottom of the asa those those screws drop it down take a uh, monkey wrench take the magwell off and then remove that add more teflon and reinsert insert it back into the magwell or i'm sorry into the valve area um, one thing that comes to my attention before we move forward uh, because we've been having getting a lot of questions about not being able to increase the velocity on the Bolton Blizzard braided hose versions. This is something that me and Mike found out that we brought up to KT. Um, and this is just rule of thumb with any marker with with your ASA. Um, what we've noticed that on some of the ASAs, the actual uh, pin, puncture valve, uh, puncture pin, I'm sorry, that actually engages the pin or ball valve of the tank is actually bigger or smaller than others. So the ones, if you look at your ASA and it's actually bigger, um, what's happening is when you're screwing your tank all the way in until it bottoms out, you're actually cutting off the air because with our Ninja tanks, our 13CI, um, 48CI, and most of the other ones out on the market that you guys have, they all use that ball valve. So when that puncture pin um, goes into the ball valve, it's actually cutting off the air. So what you wanna do, and this is, like I said, rule of thumb, with any of our units, same thing that you guys do. That for those of you who have the rear air versions with the guided uh, the guide rod, where you have to screw it all the way in and back it off enough to unscrew the guide rod. That's the same thing you'll want to do on the braided hose version. That will allow the tank to back off of that pin valve a little bit and allow for more air to go through to allow you to then adjust the velocity accordingly. Um, obviously, if you have more questions or concerns about that, you can message me. But I just want to say that before we move forward. There is the announcement. You showed the announcement section? Uh, I did not. Okay. I, I showed them so the So I put an announcement on the front on the resources. Basically, any new announcement we're doing in, we actually put it right here for you. So you say you um, have been out for a month and a couple weeks and you don't know what's going on with MCS. Just go to the announcement page and we'll kind of put it in for you. Um, the reward program, I know that we covered this in the past, but <clears throat> I'm going to go over really quick because it's uh, we just created this page for you. Um, this reward program, pretty, it's pretty cool. It's actually, um, once you log in, um, you will see your coin, uh, how much, how many coin you get. So um, that's right there, show you exactly how much coin you get. And if you register, basically you uh, spend a dollar, you get a one coin, you uh, create an account, get 200 coins, you follow Instagram, there's a couple different acts that you can do. Um, one of the things that you can also do is do the, um, uh, the bounty programs also tying to record coins. So you, um, you capture somebody either through tag or through the uh, live capture, you're gonna get able to get some coins. Share on Facebook, um, you get some coins there. Some, you can redeem it, you click on this little button down here, pop a little window, and then you can actually redeem the, uh, the, the coins once you're locked in, of course. Um, in the, on the same section of the resources announcement, um, this is what Jonathan was talking about earlier, the internal air of the Tiffany A5. Um, we've been doing this a long time and we're finally able to build this in. So that's your internal air, it runs right through the body. And for those with Tipman A5 and you want to use your hopper, you can actually install this kit and get yourself internal air. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, let me show you a photo really quick once this thing is loaded up. Um, so this is one of the photos I want to show you. You guys see that? the So you have your cyclone feed right here and internal air run right through. So now you can use an air tank. You can actually build something like this. It's uh, really nice. I have the ability to um, to have the air inside butt stock and give yourself a little like a mock uh, magazine and still use the cyclone and use all the different accessories that you already have for your uh, Timbit A5 is actually pretty neat. Um, in the past we have actually the kit that actually run the airline outside and that was very popular. We sold that out a couple of times so since we're um, doing the internal air kit for the A5, and this is one of Tipman's most popular markers, we decided to go ahead and make the, the right side body with the 
um, cyclone hook on there um, that allow you to actually use the this the system that you already have and make your marker a lot cooler. Now I wish we had this back in years, yeah. like back in the the woods ball day about uh, five six years ago. I think it would be um, badass to have that. All right, Mike is done with Spring the big, uh, caster. big caster. The oxygen. Yeah, oxygen, oxygen may. Uh, let me play around with the. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys this right here, really quick. Um, are we back onto the big caster? Yep, we're good. It's gonna go right now. Okay, so. Um, this is the gun that Mike built. It's off of the uh, the bolt, but uh, Mike gonna go over the, the the gun and functionality. But um, we adding, I asked him to add in two parts in. That's kind of pretty nice. Um, first is the uh, Hollow Tech Combat Sights that just came in. So I told him, hey, you know what? Put one in onto the gun, so you guys can um, auction it off. Second is we just have this um, this new bipod. It's called a Specter um, bipod. Um, just came in as well. Um, you can search for Spectre, like the uh, movie, James Bond movie. Oh, uh, that's such a sweet name. <laughs> <laughs> Not Spectre with an E-R, but R-E, right? Yeah. So this one actually swivel. Um, I really like it. It took us a while to get this uh, bipod. There are a couple of different bipods out there in the world, but they're not swivel. We want a swivel version. Uh, the beauty of this one, uh, the swivel, is actually you can lock it up. So you can actually, there's a little knob at the bottom right here. You can actually lock it up, and then it will, it will sink it in for you. Um, there's an adjustment at the bottom right here. You can actually um, tighten it up, and it will lock it up for you even better. What I like about it is that um, on the leg, you can actually control to any, like about the 45 degree. So actually lock right there. So you kind of aim, and you can do the 90. You can fold it back if you want to. So this way, if you want to tuck out of the way, you can actually have that, um, and you can just pull it down like that, and it just retract, button retract, and comes from straight there. I really like that. It's completely CNC, so it's not like one of those uh, cast version. This is really tough. You can actually it will last you a very long time. I I broke so many different um, bipods, kind of crazy. This one gonna last a while. Also, I kind of play around with this too. You can actually use this as, like, uh, if you do it quickly enough, you can use this at your, you know, your, uh, your, your grip if you want to. Um, last thing is that you can actually take it off pretty quickly with the cam release. You pop that open, it comes right out. Or go back in. It's extremely, extremely durable. The material that they used on this um, compared to our old 40, or, uh, Swivel bipod. Oh my gosh, this this is so a that's a, awesome piece. That's uh, so yeah, that's that's the one that uh, this is probably gonna be the only bipod we're gonna have. Here you go, Mike. Thank you very much. Yeah. So once again, guys, you guys know how the auction works by now. Um, <laughs> it's a hundred uh, hundred dollars starting bid. Uh, Javier Gonzalez is already 150 bucks. Bipods only in black at this time. Uh, maybe in the future we might have some colors available. Um, but right now, it is only available in black. So the bipod runs, uh, I think, $79 just for the bipod. The combat site is uh, $99. So those are brand new. Those two items, you're, you're at you know, $150 already. Uh, the market's internal air runs about $300. Bucks. So altogether, you can get uh, maybe you know, about $450, $500, um, this oh, rifle yeah. worth. Uh, Mike also adding a beautiful buttstock too. So you guys getting out. This is like a five hundred dollar rifle right now. You guys would to uh, to pick it up. You get the long uh, version wrist is nine inches wrist, <laughs> not the uh, six inches. So this this is a five hundred dollar system. You can get it around you know three fifty for the awesome gin pack. All right, gin. And uh, the UMP trigger frame, is that compatible with this gun? UMP trigger frame, uh, no. It's it, not. You want right. to use the, this, uh, this body. Use the Thunderbolt. One. Yeah, use the Thunderbolt trigger frame, not the UMP. So you can upgrade to that Thunderbolt trigger frame, which will eliminate that gap right here. This is like your standard A5, essentially. Um, and that will eliminate this little gap here. Uh, which may make the look a little bit better, but this is this is a sweet piece. First strike get, ready. Yeah, or you can get the the the, the gap killer too. The uh, the trigger guard that's coming in for this trigger frame, about maybe two. How much would say about maybe three three months, three four. I'm sorry, three four weeks. You can buy the the trigger guard. Let me show you how it looks like on a different model. Yes, first strike compatible. Um, let's see, I'll double. First strike compatible. 
Um, every gun that we make from here on out, guys, is most likely going to be first strike compatible. If, if it, for some godforsaken reason it doesn't have the first strike bolt in it, um, we'll make sure we go ahead and put it in uh, for you guys. Um, let's see here. Conversion kit. I mean, are you guys showing the Classic X7? The Classic X7 conversion kit is not released yet. Um, that will be what we call the Tornado. Um, that is going to, uh, some of you have seen the photos of that conversion kit, some of you have not, um, but we will do that uh, in the, we'll, we'll keep you guys updated in the future for that. Um, let's see here. So we're talking about the, uh, the trigger guard on that. I know this is not the bolt, but this is the vortex. So you can see that this is the, the standard uh, vortex trigger frame and we add in um, this uh, um, trigger guard, replacement trigger guard to actually fill in the gap there. So you can use a UMP trigger frame or you can just get a gap killer here that replace the gap. Same thing on the bolt, you will have that option when you um, get that. What's the possibility of you guys releasing a high resolution scan of APAT some so film can be for hydro dipping? A Thunderbolt 468 looks to open my mind. Um, I mean, we we, we definitely have, can. We yeah, definitely we can do, do the um, right now. We are working to bring back the AdPad. I think we've covered this a couple of times. We have literally um, a, a half of our house right now is, is soft good tactical gear. We have over 20 different pattern. Uh, each one of those pattern um, has uh, what have um, 200 different product on there. So we have a lot of stuff. Um, right now, we're, we we uh, clean them off and mostly we bulk sell them off a lot of them and to make room for the ad pad. So once we accomplish that, then we just uh, jump in all ad pad. Doesn't Pinocchio hoppers do hydro dipping? Pinocchio, they do. They, they do. offer it for other stuff. They, they, they have, told me. Yeah, they have uh, tons of different pattern. And yeah, that's one of the things. Probably we, about 100 yeah. different types. Right, right, right. Uh, Pinocchio hoppers, guys. Um, I think I've told Tucker, Danielson, I can't remember who I told about that, but I spoke with those guys. Kate, they're friends of KT. Um, they do hydro dipping for hoppers, and they can do pretty much any pattern that right. you give them. Plus, they have about 100 to 150 like in stock right. that they actually use. Um, he told me that they can do any of our shells. Um, so they're definitely one you can talk. They're back east, right? Chicago area or... I think mid east somewhere. Mid east, yeah. they're somewhere. If you look up Pinocchio hoppers, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. Um, they could probably do it for you, um, and and then they can definitely help you. As far as at Pat, I mean, we have high resolution. Um, we just need the the actual PNG file for that, right? We have I don't it. Know how they do that? Yeah, we yeah, have, we have it. it. Yeah. So if when the time comes, we're definitely going to jump in and do that. Yeah. Um, let's see here, uh, Peter Poco. I saw your comment about. Uh, modding the pump for internal air. KT is, we are releasing an internal air upgrade for the, for the pump, but modding it should not in, hinder the way, I don't know how you're modding it, but in order for it to work now, it's a simple uh, linkage arm modification that is necessary for it to work properly. Uh, has nothing to do with it not, no longer being able to shoot first strike, so. The bolt is the same, so I don't know where you got that information, or if you did something. Um, uh, you know, we, you don't. If you may, if you modify it now, it's for it to work. It, you'll be able to use the first strike bolt. So yeah, the the only thing that um, is actually need is the, um, the the linkage arm. Right. So it's a little bit shorter, about one eighth shorter. If you want to, we here. I did myself. I just get my little hammer, tap the uh, the linkage arm straight. And then I cut off a little bit, I bend it down, and I put it back in, and there I go. The, the one I've been using, that's what I did, and it works great. So that will, you know, that will be, uh, that will you, be released later. The worst case scenario, you mess it up, get an eye linkage arm, or if you have the patient, mess it up, put it in the box, and wait until the, um, the, the internal air linkage arm come in and just get that instead. And the bolt will, will just not go back far enough. Um, well, I don't know what bolt you're are you talking about the the actual bolt the firing bolt doesn't go back far enough or the or the power tube are we still you, talking you, about a pump yeah he's talking about the pump yes that's exactly what i need the the linkage arm yeah the linkage okay. arm yeah that's mm -hmm. that's that would cause that problem for those of you who have the older version blizzards bolt um, vortexes anything like that 
that now upgraded to the shape projectile bolt, you will most likely need to shave down the power tube. The power tube is actually the part that goes inside the bolt. Um, if you do not shave that down a millimeter or two, what's going to happen is your fins are going to catch, you're going to get jams. So it depends so. on the body that you have, right? Um, if you rack back your, your bolt and go to look through the channel here, if you put your finger in there and if you are, and if the, the, the front of the bolt, the plastic part of it, protrude into the chamber, chances are the fin will catch that, that little step. So what you do is you take a file, take it off, out, off quickly, and just file off just a little bit. So it it better to recess below the chamber than if you can see that below the chamber, then you're good. I right. mean, your your eyes actually pretty keen when it comes to alignment. Um, it's automatic, right? So um, you won't you won't able to you, you can't miss it. And one step below, then you're good to go. If you over sand, for example, like I say three millimeters, it's not going to make a difference. No, three minutes is huge. I yeah, mean, yeah, no, no, you, 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 you overstand. I think you, you have a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, I haven't seen it. I mean, I've, I've seen some that were, that customers have done that were yeah. pretty bad, but I, I haven't but seen But it's still functional. It's not, yeah. yeah it's still I haven't functional. seen any performance decreases or anything like that. Um, let's see here. Ba, ba, ba. This is the auction marker. Some of you are asking. Um, Al Doble, it's this one right here. You got your vertical grip. You got the brand new uh, bipod that we're we're now going to be selling. Um, you got a nine inch handguard. This is a looks like a it's a rifle, definitely seven eighths inch rifled barrel with the. Is uh, it a rifle? I believe so. Let me double check on that just to make sure. Is it barrel mounted? Uh, is this barrel? Really? Oh, it's barrel mounted. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Really? Is Wait, it a yeah. rifle barrel? No, it's a smooth bore. Oh, okay. it is a smooth bore. Okay. smooth bore. Okay. All right, Mike confirmed it. Brand new Holotech site that we just got back into stock. Um, this is the black version. This uses, uh, let's see here, I believe double A batteries. Double yes. A batteries. Yeah, two double A batteries, which is really easy to find, um, which is nice. It has a red and green. Mm -hmm. um, the reticle is very, very, very bright. Um, you have our that custom stock that we have in the back. You already have rear air with the remote line version set up here. Um, this, has, I mean, this has tons of upgrades. <laughs> You'll get one Helix, and then this is your 14 round uh, shape projectile magazine. So it comes with two mags one Helix for regular balls, and one uh, D Max for first track and stuff. So we're at 260, Al Doble still. All right, Al. <laughs> we'll keep that there. Um, we use the Holotech cover, I think we sell those. Yeah, uh, for you guys that are shooting first strikes, um, this has been a question that I've been getting quite often too. Uh, we'll have to do a video on this, is uh, how to zero in um, sights for paintball and first strike. In my opinion, okay, my opinion, people, um, optics for round ball is going to be very difficult to be functional. And the reason for that is because um, one, this, the projectiles that I'll probably be sighting the scope into will not be the same as yours, which means there will be a lot of variables. Your barrel may be different. Um, I may do a video with the shape projectiles and the one-shot barrel, since a lot of you guys have uh, purchased them since our last video on them. Um, and then you can kind of see how, you'll, how to zero in uh, a, an optic or sight for first strikes or shape projectiles, which there are not a lot of videos on that. So a lot of people ask, um, just to let you know, you always want to sight in the scope on the drop of the of the shape projectile. So what you'll do is you'll have a the shot go, the projectile actually go over the reticle and then come down, and that's what you'll kind of how you're going to sight that in. Um, but for these, the Holotex, this is shape projectile ready. Um, I'll I'll do a video. We have the the ones that are on sale still. Um, and then we have obviously the holotex are back in stock. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll do a video for that. That's been a, a very, very popular question that we get. Um, but just keep that in mind. Um, paintball without the hammerhead barrel system, in my opinion, or any performance barrel that's going to give you that consistency, an optic is going to be purely cosmetic. Um, it's not going to really yeah. be functional. So, uh, Al, <laughs> this is uh, A5 threads. You're right on that. Um, and the. Um, Somebody asking a question. Forgot. Uh, and Dusty, you, you got your finger working again. <laughs> on the uh, box mag, yeah, box mag. Al, Al was asking about box mag earlier. We are working on box mag to bring it back. I'm doing some um, 
some paperwork on it, doing some final adjustment, and then um, do the analysis on it to make sure it's worth um, doing. So once I have that, we'll we'll crank that out. Should we just should we just tell them the 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 kind of the the list or the uh, what is it the the organization of what we're working on currently and how it's going to probably come out because we're we've been going back and forth on on the. On what we're working on and what's we're not. I mean, <laughs> what, about that is nothing's definitive. So right, yeah, it's, but it's, I mean, yeah. we're we're not going to be jumping around from project to project. Right <laughs> now, the primary concern is the round. Right. So the round is the primary thing first that will yeah. most likely come out before the Hydra. Before and the anything pistol, else. Before anything else. Um, unfortunately, the the box mag, like you said, he's finishing up, but there that's taking that takes a little bit of time to finalize. Um, the pistol is being worked on in correlation with the round, but is still uh, a little bit behind. And then ultimately the, um, what was the other one? PTR. Uh, the PTR. The PTR is something that uh, needs final touches as well. So everything is nearing completion. Our main and priority concern right now is the round. Right. So that's where a lot of our time is going. That's where a lot of Omar's time is going. Um, and then ultimately, I would say the next in the queue uh, would be the um, uh, the, the X7 tornado. Kit, the tornado. Yeah. So KT's been working on that. Um, I pop in his office and see him working on that quite a bit. Every day, actually. Every day. Yeah. So, for last, um, <laughs> so for a while now. So that will that will definitely be. So that way, you guys kind of get an idea of where we're headed. Um, and then we're not, you know, I know you guys ask ask a lot of the questions, the same questions, but that's kind of where we see releases coming in the order that they're coming in. Uh, the round is definitely the priority at this time. Can the die box mag fit on a 468 or the hurricane kit? Uh, I haven't seen any mods for the that box mag to work on our hurricane or uh, a 468 or any other gun. Um, I'd assume if it would, it would definitely be a 3D printed feed, call, feed neck. Um, but even then, I don't know if the the clearance on a on a die dam box mag would fit on a hurricane mag well. Even even if it fit, you probably not able to turn it on because of what I know that the um, the box mag, the die dam box mag, is actually sync with the trigger of oh, the, the, right. the rifle. Right. So it's it's like actually using um, the signal to send to the box mag to turn on, as opposed to the one we have is kind of universal use of sound. Um, activated and audio activated. So as soon as you hear a firing cycle, it will feed the round. So um, one, you have to choose one system over the other. Uh, Brian Avery, the AK. Uh, that's that is uh, the tornado. That yeah. is going to be the. It's it's basically modeled after the AK-12. It'll be for the X-7. So right. that will be what we're talking about when we talk about that. Um, AK handguard for the 468. Ooh. Uh, Probably we can reserve the AK stuff to, to the the conversion. Yeah, to conversion and the complete kit. right tornado. It's, it's going to be built on the theater. The um, um, right now we have an AK handguard, right? You can you get the one for Vortex and one for the the Blizzard and the Bolt. So those kind of in the realm of that. But as far as four six eight, I don't think we're gonna build AK on that. We're gonna dedicate uh, an AK system off the Vortex. That way you have a a a, a mark or a rifle that just AK from eight from top to bottom, not makeshift where you know it's not kind of Frankenstein situation there. So we're trying to stay away from that as much as possible. The the tornado is going to be a badass dedicated AK platform. Um, it will be the only of its class. All right. Uh, the four six eight is an AR fifteen, guys. It doesn't matter how you dress it up. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be another variation of an AR fifteen. Um, yeah, Stan Dillard. Yeah, leave it alone. It's, be <laughs> it's beautiful as is. Um, Let's see here. So yeah, Al Doble still has the auction gun right here for 260. Um, let's see what else do we have here. Uh, so the new products that we have, guys, that are, are up on the website now is the new bipod. Um, the Holotech sights are back in. A lot of you guys have been asking. We had them in, in tan. Uh, we have the in, them back in black now. Uh, only the medium size one. Uh, we didn't bring back the other sizes, so it'll only be the medium size one. Uh, which, in my opinion, is all you need. You don't need the long one or the big one. Um, this is actually the best one. It's the most popular yeah, one we have. Yeah. Um, and that's the one I sold out there, too. We still have them, right? The big one, the small one? No. We don't have we, any more black. We really? only have 10. 
Oh, okay, gold, ten, 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 gold, 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 yeah, gold in those options. Okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, uh, Tucker Danielson, I saw you said, will we come out with a loading device for a Helix? There was a gentleman um, at an event a couple months back who created something where do you know did you see that video i don't remember but i've seen it mike knows if you yeah. message mike mike knows what right. it is this guy created something um i believe he's in canada and you literally insert your helix mag and he did i think he he put in i think like i don't know, remember if it was like a I think, pole I think or Mac, something legion did one of the guys from Mac Mac legion like they did one or was it was uh, it yeah, yeah, guys? Yeah. i don't know yet yeah um, Timothy Gaylord, uh, do you have the stock yet? With the oh, the HHA scope adjuster. Um, we do not have any more in stock. We can get some more, or you can buy on Amazon. Um, Amazon has the other cheapest price right. um, available. It's called the HHA scope optimizer, mm -hmm. um, which is that. For those of you who have a DMR, um, that's one question that I've received is, is that a necessary piece to be successful with shape projectiles? Yes, in my opinion. For those of you using the DMR, the HHA optimizer allows you to adapt to sh different shooting conditions as well as different variations of first strikes. Um, there's been a lot of hoopla going around with uh, first strikes, new yellow rounds, and you know all these different variations of bore sizes right. and all this stuff um, the optimizer allows you to be consistent and allow you to adapt to those shooting conditions without having to re-zero in your optic so for those of you using the dmr and that are dedicated shape projectile users the hha optimizer will be a benefit for you and it's definitely worth the investment all right, uh, let's go to the uh, auction one last time, um, and then we're probably ending um, about 10 minutes, mm -hmm. five, 10 minutes, and then we'll, we'll call it at night. Uh, and so we can pack. We're going to head out tomorrow um, to zero hour. So you guys out there, love to meet you guys. Stop by and say hi. So um, auction gun this week. This is... Are we still on? <laughs> Okay, so auction skin this week. Um, this is a bolt version um, rifle. Has the uh, internal air with a new buttstock. Has the uh, new bipod right here that you can actually have multi position. It's pretty cool. And it has the uh, combat sight. Right now, Al Dobo is still on the top, right? He's still on the top for 260. Yes, Al Dobo's right. got it for 260. You guys can bid in increments of 10, and we guys have 10 minutes at 6 o'clock. We will end. Yeah, we we'll sign out at 6 o'clock. Yeah. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them now. Uh, for those of you guys on the East Coast um, that are going to be at zero hour or live in that area and have wanted to ask us questions or purchase products, come and see Mike and KT. Um, this has been the first ever, right? Right. First ever have uh, both of the bosses over in New York for this event. Um, so I definitely think this is going to be a, uh, a definitely a benefit for all of you guys wanting some some answers, some tech stuff. Um, come and see them. It, it'll definitely be worth it. Is there a bounty or anything special going on for that event? And we're still working with uh, Stephen uh, on that. He's supposed to get me a list. I'm still waiting for it. Once I have the list from um, Steven, I will put a list up for the bounty, um, for uh, an event bounty for you guys, and you can get a collect your price as uh, <laughs> one of those bounty game goes. Uh, Javier, unfortunately, the auction guns are as is, guys. We cannot change the stuff on the auction gun. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu. Unless, to unless you're out, you stop in, you want to change something, right, Al? Nah, it's <laughs> going. This GQ has a hug from me for you. Uh, the, Brian Avery, there will probably not be a trade-in program for the 468 to a PTR. That's going to be the only of its class. Um, that's going to definitely be a very, very uh, a, a preci precision uh, quality product. Uh, Scott Faulkner, Mike will have your gun. Um, are you guys gonna, You'll be there early Friday, won't you? Yeah. Yeah. We're we're actually landing at about one o'clock in the morning. 
So we're going to hang out early and probably head up early. <laughs> we always say that's, that's an early flight we get, and we're, it's really early. Mike's going to be injecting adrenaline into his buttocks yeah. uh, in the airport bathroom before he gets to right. um, But, yeah, Scott, just see Mike. Um, he'll have his have your gun with him. Um, I'll bring all the rest of Do we have a yeah. compressor to fill tanks at the shop? Yeah, we do, Al. We, got, we have a compressor. I modded my Hurricane to fit a mil-spec barrel nut like you told me. It was a nice fit, but I had to take it out because of the front end of the marker. Uh, looks a little off when the pins go. Yeah, uh, Danny, it's it, the which shape is not for... That gun alone, like a UMP, is not for a mil-spec handguard um, or any quad rail or anything like that. It is for a rectangular version. Right. Um, there are some other options out there now that I've seen. Um, but it's yeah, it doesn't look good. <laughs> yeah, the best one is the key mount handguard. Um, that's the, like I said, the the problem that we never made it because the the displacement of the top rail to the center bore it's off like about a quarter of an inch. So it has a step. That's why we didn't the when we made that we didn't intend to make it fit on the Hurricane or the Phenom. But you can make you can put it on and it it, it is functional. It just doesn't look that great. Yeah. Um, Al, you can see me tomorrow. Um, I'll, I'll chrono your 468, no problem. Uh, what Scott said, what side are we on? Do we know where you guys are stationed? We don't know where we're going to be, and we don't know where we're staying. We, we just show up, and then we, we go where the wind blows. <laughs> uh, mad cool, Emily. <laughs> just look for the big uh, canopy. Right. Uh, Hurricane ACR, do you all have the parts? Um, the X7 ACR stock is a Tipman part. Um, we have one in the lobby. Uh, as far as the, as far as anything else, I, we don't have anything like that. We're we're really limited on uh, X7 parts outside of stocks and stuff. Um, bop, bop, bop. Does the Blizzard have the lock bolt now? Yes, Gabriel, it does. Um, it's on the website. Right? Yeah, search lock bolt. Search L -L lock bolt on the website. Yeah, it's on there. Um, Al Doble is still, uh, we still got, what do you got, seven minutes. Seven minutes to go. Al Doble, 260. I, I, think, he's, I think he's going to take it home this time. $260 for or, a $500 yeah. marker. That well, he come in and pick sweet. it up this time. <laughs> sweet. Yeah, Al, if you're coming in tomorrow, we'll just keep it for you here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, what side are you playing on? Oh, they're not playing Scott. They're just uh, they're going to play. Javier Gonzalez, two seventy. All right, Javier. Bring the bring the heat up. Javier, <laughs> Javier actually uh, he messaged me on Facebook. He said he's tired of getting outbidded on <laughs> on the auction. Well, actually, this is a good is a good one to get, <laughs> Javier. It's actually it's a, it's a nice one. Like Vortex so Vortex lock bolt uh, will be coming out shortly. We're waiting on that. That's the last. I'm one. doing some final tests on them. Um, the this variant and different model and different versions. So I kind of uh, make okay. sure they all work before we release it. Okay. Come on, Al. Start on top, buddy. He is. He's, all he's right. I'm rooting for you, man. <laughs> two eighty. Um, let's see here. Different handguard for Hurricane. Uh, there's really not much. We just went through that on the, uh, as far as the key mod, this is going to be your best bet. The key um, mod, I don't know, yes, I don't know if people know about a key mod handguard for the Hurricane. There's different lengths. Yeah, let um, me, let me show them where, um, the the small, small cast, uh, small caster. Okay. Yeah. Uh, blah, 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 product, uh, grips and handguards. Grip handguard. right okay. So these are the um, this one right here, and these these are key mod handguard for the hurricane. Seven, nine, and twelve. Yeah, so th there are different lengths on that. So these are probably the best one for it. It looks pretty good, and you can use key mod rail on it. Um, that's something you want to look at when it comes to the hurricane. That's there's not much option out there, other than the plastic one that you can get from Tipman, which has um, MP5 version, UMP, yeah. and some other ones. This is all metal construction, um, so it's very durable. It uses the key mod, so you, there's different lengths of key mod. There's a there's a 3.75, you have a 4.75, and then even a one inch, um, which you can put many types of accessories, um, and it locks right on there. They're easy to take on and off, so you need to you know worry about anything else like that. So for those of you who have a hurricane um, that you're looking to, you know, get a uh, longer or more appealing type handguard, 
these are your best options available. All right, gonna put a big cast here. Yeah. And go back to the, I tab, my second tab okay. there. I don't know, that, one. that one, yeah. Okay, I uh, need some, would you look better if there was a cap or a pin dragging, blah, blah, blah. What's the best hand grip for a die dam? Uh, die dam has a Picatinny on the bottom. Right. Um, you can really use anything you want. It really depends. Uh, for me, I have big hands. Um, I the like nice the strike. stubby, yeah, the nice, nice strike. strike. Or if the, you're at uh, uh, zero, zero Hour, we have actually quite a few of those bringing out. So you actually play around with that when you're out there. See how it feels before you pick one up. The Bolt is compatible with the A5 E-Trigger. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's the uh, BT4 E-Trigger, um, Al. So... Uh, bu, 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 into you can the... actually mod the A5 E trigger to make it work. Yeah. It's just the displacement of the hole. It's a little bit uh, shift backward Gen. a little bit. So I've seen a couple of players. What he did is he uh, poxy the hole up, and then redrill the the hole for the trick for the for the screws, and it works great. All right, go Jin. All right, guys, we got three minutes left. What's up, on Joseph Rojas? Uh, John is a big beast. K2 bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Indeed. Yeah, I'll take yeah, care of him. Right. No problem. Uh, can I actually get behind my own iron sights in my hurricane? Like I said, guys, the uh, we talked this um, uh, 300. Damn, yeah, 300. Um, you know, we talked about the drop down ASA and it's and it's functional and its functionality. Um, the drop down ASA will allow you guys, especially you guys are using the i5s now, the i4s, the Hawkeyes solid eye relief to allow you guys to actually they're using first strikes that have optics have the hha optimizer etc to really it all comes together in one piece and it looks really really cool so the vortex has one the bolt has one and the hurricane has one so for those of you that want that eye relief that drop down it adds that more concealed uh that more compact look in my opinion uh, and it also allows for solid eye relief behind your optic with multiple um, goggles and face mask options out there. So, like Dusty Hatfield, I know you have one. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. Um, Tucker Danielson, I know you have one. Um, Stan, I know you you have some out there too. Um, uh, so, you know, you, you definitely have that piece. Uh, this would be a solid upgrade for this unit right here for whoever gets it um, in the next two minutes. Uh, but yeah, definitely, I, I'm a big, big uh, believer behind that. Um, Such a pretty cool. Yeah, you can actually reload route. Out. That 14, 14 boom, rounder boom, helps. Boom, yeah. Boom. Yeah. Load, drop it on the side. Except the uh, the, the bipod is actually tilt. You can actually tilt left and right without moving. Uh, Brian Avery, ballistic goggles, mesh mask, and or ear pro and paintball. In my opinion, um, that would work. It really comes down to your field. Um, there is no mesh mass out there that is anti-rated for paintball because usually fields don't allow it. Um, I mean, but if you can, if you're allowed to use it and it's the metal mesh mask, I definitely there will not be around a paintball that will go through that. It'll break uh, in your mouth if it goes and hits that area. Um, as far as ear pro, let's do um, a last call. We at uh, 5:59, yeah, 559. so. When a six o'clock hits, that's it. Right now, 300 out Dovo. Good luck, buddy. <laughs> yeah, we got one more. So, Brian Avery, all that, uh, it really depends on your field um, if they allow you to do that. Uh, cash and carry, 15 minutes away, 310. <laughs> ah, gin pot. All right. It's when over. When it's over. Now, it's out, over. Out. Gin. No, gin got it. Gin got it at six? Yeah, 310. 310. Yeah. Okay. All right, gin. You got it. Congratulations, buddy. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Other than that, guys, that's all I got for you. I think that's all KT's got for you. Um, if you're headed to zero hour, uh, make sure you go and take say hello to KT and Mike. If you have any questions, tech work, uh, concerns, or you want to yell at somebody, <laughs> go, go see them. Well, we'll, <laughs> <laughs> we'll lend you our ears. <laughs> But other than that, thank you guys for joining us again this week. Next week's episode, uh, we're going to be doing some more interactive stuff uh, for you guys. I'll have some new products in here for you to show. Um, and then other than that, we will see you guys out on the field. Thank you very much, guys. See you out there. Combat Sports.